नहीं ये मत लगाओ हां या नाउ इट्स सेइंग फेसबुक लाइव यस सो वी आर लाइव नाउ वी आर लाइव ओके कैमरा इज आल्सो देयर कैमरा इज आल्सो कम प्लीज जॉइन यस ओके शैल वी गो अहेड देन ओके good evening everybody and welcome to the first session of uh, optometry council of india on uh, facebook the topic for today is the empowerment of optometrists uh, in eye care advocacy um advocacy is a very broad uh, topic so we thought that we'd give you a kind of a snapshot uh, through one of the projects that uh, optometry council of india ran um this project was entirely right from uh, you know the conception to implementation and uh, results and everything was completely managed solely by optometrists so that's the speciality of the project and i think uh, in, in terms of advocacy we do have some kind of uh, knowledge to kind of gain through this project and that's the reason we picked this up so um, i'll just share the screen and i'll give you a small a snapshot of uh, what the project was about and then after that we go on to the panel discussion before that let me introduce all the panelists uh, i think all of you are familiar with paula she is the operation manager for optometry council of india um, then after that is mishti so i'm i'm not going in any particular order just whatever i'm seeing on my screen that's the order that i'm going in so mishti is uh, a young optometrist uh, practicing in bangalore uh, divya is uh, if you can just wave divya so that everybody knows yeah divya is an uh, educator in uh, srm chennai uh, after that is aishwarya who is an educator at lakshmi college in uh, navi mumbai uh, roshna administrator at bansara college of optometry in shillong uh, vishal uh, is a young optometrist at present in calcutta uh, of course uh, the star of the day nilesh sitte uh, everybody oh, knows uh, he does not need any young young optometrist <laughs> young optometrist okay <laughs> young optometrist uh, Saranya, who is the principal of Achuta College uh, in Salem, and uh, of course the other star, Kemraj, uh, from Boshenlom. So this uh, project ex- was called as Experience Vision, and uh, let me just share my screen, and I'll give you just a snapshot of. Yeah, so Experience Vision. It was a CSR initiative of Boshenlom India, and this was executed by Optometry Council of India. basically the project was in three phases phase 1 was uh, material distribution in terms of posters to 400 government schools uh, on uh, which had eye care information and uh, in different languages and so on phase 2 was we screened around uh, 15 to 16000 children all government school children all over india it was a pan india project basically and phase 3 was a very interesting one where we used young optometrists to counsel Uh, high school children about optometry as a career phase 1 uh, we came up with 12 posters and i think nilesh will uh, you know talk a little bit more about this all these posters were developed by young optometrists and if you can see the posters uh, they're all very colorful ones basically made colorful so that they're more attractive to children in school Uh, and they were made in nine different languages so we had 12 posters giving varying kind of information about on eye care and also you know about some of the myths like you know uh, as you can see cross eyes uh, they need attention it's not that some uh, you know some of the uh, communities think that cross eyes is lucky and things like that and they really don't uh, uh, you know uh, um, consult anybody if the kid has cross eyes so varying kind of information the posters had and uh, we also developed the powerpoint presentation which uh, the optometrists went and presented in these government schools both to the teachers and to the students so the presentation had uh, information on myopia on squint and various common eye conditions basically and this is just an example of uh, divya uh, attending one of the schools and uh, presenting and basically the posters as you can see being used uh, and uh, Sharanya on the other side giving a presentation again, and we also involved the school children uh, in terms of taking care of the poster, seeking those posters, so they feel more more involved in the entire project as well. Phase two, we basically developed a, a 
you know, protocol that was completely uh, optometry centric. Uh, the reason I say that is we aimed at a comprehensive eye examination so that we could pick up as many uh, conditions, eye conditions as possible and without any dilatation of the eye. So the available protocols were all reviewed and then we came up with a, a different protocol in terms of uh, eye examination in all these government schools and this was a standard protocol. So the same protocol was used pan India uh, in different locations. Everybody followed the same protocol and this was released as well by Bosch and Lom. And you can see Paula giving the training uh, through Skype. You know, now of course everybody is online but at that time, although uh, you know travel was not a hassle, we still thought that we could do uh, a Skype call uh, and then train all of them on the standard protocol. So all the educators uh, who were involved in this uh, project were all trained on the same protocol and the equipment uh, were also sent to all of them. Uh, this is again, some pictures of phase two. We of course did color vision and binocular vision assessment and to our surprise, we did find that there were 2% children who suffered from some kind of color vision anomaly, which was you know, quite surprising. And the 12% uh, uh, had some kind of binocular vision anomaly, which was picked up. And this 12% uh, is quite similar to other studies which have been reported as well. And the kids were also given uh, you know, a couple of frames from which they could themselves select. So uh, they had the option, you know, if they didn't like one, they could select another frame and things like that. So that freedom was also given uh, to the children. And uh, on the right-hand side of my screen, you can see the small children in Northeast. They're so, I mean, I put this picture because they're so cute and chubby. And uh, the, the, the uh, photograph was so, um, what to say, so attractive. So I had to- uh, So lively there. also. Absolutely, absolutely lively. And uh, again, some more photographs. And they went for one more visit to actually check whether the spectacles uh, that was uh, you know, processed are good. Uh, is it functioning for the people who had refractive error and so on? Uh, again, the distribution of spectacles. So uh, basically, just wanted to highlight one case uh, where we picked up amblyopia and, uh, you know, Cambridge was uh, uh, quite helpful in uh, providing contact lens to that patient of amblyopia and that person is getting treated because of anisometropia. We had to give them contact lens as an option. And uh, they, this, uh, there's a follow-up being done on this patient as well. So that's something that just came out of the project. Phase three was very interesting. So we had to go and, uh, you know, look at uh, high school children. So anybody 10th, 11th and 12th, uh, these were the three classes that were targeted. And uh, young optometrists went to counsel about optometry as a profession and also share their experience. You know, they were op uh, uh, optometrists who had recently graduated. And so they shared their experiences to tell them what optometry as a career was. This is one of the flyers that the students themselves developed. And these are some of the props they use to basically, you know, explain about optometry as a profession. So um, in conclusion, uh, basically the entire project was uh, in three phases and it was completed in a time of one and a half years. And I would, as I said, like to repeat that the entire project right from the conception, development of posters, development of uh, materials uh, that were used for counseling, everything, entire thing was, uh, you know, um, uh, managed entirely by optometry students and optometry, uh, optometrists as professionals. So that's uh, basically uh, a summary of the entire project. Um, I'll stop sharing the screen now. So uh, now it's over to you, Nilesh, as a chair and to share your experiences when you develop the posters. And then after that, we'll go on to, you know, the different phases and so on. Yeah, Lakshmi, I think this is, this is commendable work done by the Optometry Council of India, along with all these wonderful young and also experienced educators, clinicians, young uh, graduating, recently graduated optoms, all of them, you know, coming together and putting yeah. up such wonderful show. And I think we also need to uh, congratulate uh, Bosch and Lom for, you know, yes. having for supporting this, partnering yeah. or, and supporting in this kind of uh, project which is actually reaching out to the community it's not like you know we are just talking about optometry within ourselves we are reaching out to the community where we are required right 
we are doing the needful where it is needed. I think that is extremely important. And I just saw the numbers on the last slide. I think they are phenomenal numbers in, in, yeah. in what we have yeah. achieved uh, together as a group. So first of all, congratulations, congratulations to everyone involved in this. And I think this is a commendable, commendable job. Um, yeah, I mean, I just like to say a word that, you know, all of them, all of them involved in the project, all the schools that we partnered with, all the, uh, you know, young uh, optometrists that we partnered with in this project. I mean, absolutely fantastic. Mm. Absolutely fantastic when it comes to, you know, things like uh, their enthusiasm in getting involved True. in the project, as well as, you know, when it comes to data collection and then, so, um, um, you know, uh, delivering whatever we had requested, we had to follow the protocol. Uh, they had to fill the data sheet and then send it and all of that. So absolutely commendable job. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, this one lakh students that we covered, the posters was a great hit, you know, among the, uh, not that I'm not saying that the different faces, anything else was uh, wrong with it, but the posters, mm. I mean, the, the, the hit of the posters was so much that we were getting so many responses from yeah. everybody different different responses saying oh you know this kid said this looking at the poster somebody else said something else looking at the poster the posters were absolutely a hit and awesome. uh, we made sure that the word optometrist was mentioned so In that poster, uh, the profession yeah. gets recognized uh, and uh, you know the teachers get to know what the profession is that there is a profession called optometry and so on so absolutely yeah yeah, and, and this these things will not happen without having passion and enthusiasm, as you said. See, we don't do this because we are going to earn money out of this. This is completely for the society. This is mm -hmm. something which owe to the society and something which we want to give back to the profession, right? So it is absolutely voluntary in most of the cases. And it's all about passion. Yeah? That is what drives us here. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I'll just quickly share my own experience. It's not much of my own experience, but you know, wherever I was involved, I was so happy that, you know, we started talking about it. And then there was a point when we said, you know, we need to develop some posters so that, you know, um, these school, very simple posters that small children can understand and lay, lay people, public can understand. And then I remember, oh, we have a wonderful group of young optometrists and students who are so, so creative and they are just waiting for, you know, an opportunity and a platform to showcase their creativity. So I think it was just marrying two different, um, I would say, entities for this common cause. It was a wonderful marriage and you saw eventually what came out of it, right? So when I just posted this on a group that, you know, there is an opportunity where you might have to showcase your creativity. Um, we might need posters like that for children and uh, it has to be done voluntarily, all of you. Who, who do you think will put your hand up? Immediately in first 10 to 15 minutes, I had around 15, 20 volunteers coming up. So it was difficult for me to pick and choose actually. I was thinking, it will, who has time and who will do this? But it was the other way around actually. And there were so many people who were enthusiastic. So what we did was we immediately created a smaller group who were interested in developing these posters. Vishal was one of them, actually. I think Misty was also one of them. Mm -hmm. So these people, and there are more people also whom we cannot invite all of them here. But they, they came together. They formed a group. They started discussing ideas. Within the group, they, small, uh, they formed smaller groups. And they worked on each poster. And then there was, you know, ideas floating around. There was... Um, feedback given the first cut is not good enough, then you have to work on the second cut, etc. And I think we also got it eventually get it done from the professionals just to get the look and feel, you know, completely standardized. So I think the end product was tremendous. And in the entire process, the, these young students and uh, these students and the young optometrists, they learned a lot. So I think, thank you so much to OCI for giving them this opportunity to at least showcase their talent, right? So yeah, yeah that, that's about and, my point. Yeah, and you know, as you said, creativity, absolutely creative, absolutely creative when it comes to, and you know, some of them, uh, because of the, um, you know, limited areas that we could cover, uh, we went out with 12 posters. If we had more, yeah, I mean, we could have so definitely many. had so uh, more uh, more uh, areas to cover because, and the taglines that they were coming up with, I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. fabulous, yeah. yeah. So congratulations And we also to had all. to make sure, you know, that it was, uh, uh, the tagline was not only relevant in English. We had to make sure that when it was translated well. also, yeah. the same information uh, gets conveyed. So that was a difficult part, you know, uh, saying that the same information, if translated, 
needs to be conveyed in all the different languages right and in, uh, information without losing the impact that's always a challenge yeah. in translation yeah. right yeah Yeah, so I think eventually we achieved what we wanted, and I want to compliment all those who are involved in creating those. I think let let's move across to all these lovely panelists who are just waiting for me to mera turn kab aayega kind of situation, right? So we'll we'll go phase wise. I think we have three phases, so we'll go phase wise. And in phase one, I think Divya, Saranya, and Roshna were involved in that. But I'm just gonna hang on. I'm just gonna ask Divya to hold on a little bit. And being the senior in this particular uh, group, I'm gonna come to Saranya. Yeah, Saranya. Uh, so thank you, uh, thank you. But uh, senior, I'm not sure. I exactly love the word, but shall I, shall I say it wiser? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna come to Saranya and ask her. So uh, Saranya, how was your overall experience? Because you um, you did this in a in not in not Small the main town. city. It's it's yeah. it was a smaller town, right? Yeah. It was Salem, is it? Erod. Erod. So you did Erod. it in Erod. So relatively yeah. smaller town. So we it are is. just curious to know how it went on in your particular city and what was right. what did you enjoy and what were the challenges. Um. So Erod is is basically a small town which is situated between two bigger cities, uh, Salem and uh, Coimbatore. Okay. So you know it's it's usually people going west all the time for treatment and things like that. So we had we have a lot of um, we have to put in a lot of effort. to actually reach and say no all the services are available even here and now mm-hmm. um what i enjoyed the most about the whole process was when i went in and i had to talk to the headmasters or the teachers uh, the posters were fantastic you know it gave me a direct walk through because i said can i just this is what talk i have you about these posters i didn't tell them i'm going to come and do the screening first So I said, can I just talk to you about a little bit of awareness that I want to create, and can I just, you know, just just give me half an hour. Let me talk to you about this, and then we'll figure out what we want to do next. Um, and I was telling Lakshmi as well. Um, when we finally went in and spoke to the teachers, the teachers were like, uh, they'll tear the posters. They won't be maintained well. You know, I got a whole list of how the process is not going to work. So I said, okay, let me. give me a chance let me try with you students try. let's see what happens so um we came up with the plan that um, we had these nine different posters so we were going to go and give it to each class and say this is your poster this is your class poster wow so um even now when we went um, six months back before this lockdown it is so beautifully maintained by those kids <laughs> um and and they take so much pride because you know one of them was like ma'am ma'am vand paarenga i mean she basically said come and see the poster see how well ours is so they're and really they valuing it they're, it they're valuing it yeah they had decorated the poster and one of the things that i really really uh, felt as far as the usage of this poster was concerned is this one on squint Uh, there is a big myth down south that um, if you have a squint, it it is a big sign of luck, and you're not supposed to have it, uh, you know, so- sorted at all. The squint is supposed to remain. So one of those children who I screened, um, she saw the poster and brought her younger brother, who was a year and a half old, because he had a squint. So mm-hmm. I I think we achieved the target of actually creating the awareness. Absolutely, so, um, they, and they say proof of the sambar is in eating, right? Eating. So you got absolutely. the evidence. You got the evidence. Absolutely. So I, I, I felt, you know, really, this, this felt very close to my heart, awesome. and uh, you know, generally pediatric screening is something which I do on a regular basis. So this, this made it so much more uh, rewarding. Um, we, in fact, have, uh, you know, so some of the local lions clubs have now come forward saying. Uh, if you want more posters, let us mm. know and kind of things. So very cool. You know, um, and I, I think that was the highlight of what our experience, as far as uh, the first phase of it was concerned. Beautiful. So the entry was made much easier with the colorful posters. So if you, if your product is good, it sells for itself. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Any any so, challenges? Um, challenges. I think initially getting the permission from the government. Okay. um getting the legal permissions and things sorted out so um again the posters helped because when i was talking about the posters to one of the teachers who happened to be a lions club member the lions club then said why aren't you being you know why aren't you doing it for more schools and i said well this is the problem and then they said let's go to the collector we'll get it sorted out for you <laughs> 
So, so the poster was like literally the poster child for me. You know, everywhere I went, I could just kind of wave the poster and get things done. So um, that initially was a bit of a challenge. Okay. Um, because there is a screening system in place um, which has been organized by the government of Tamil Nadu. Um, so we had to sort of say, no, we'll do this. Let, give us a turn also, let us do this. So uh, going through the collector, uh, getting things done that way, right. you know, initially was a bit of a struggle, but then uh, right. it, it did work. Awesome. Thanks so much. Um, thanks so much, Aranya. I'm going to come back to you a little later. Let me move across to Divya. She's also, you know, itching to go. And her experience is also very unique. So we are all ears to listen to you as well, Divya. Uh, Nile, yeah. I just want to say that Aishwarya was also involved in both phase one and phase two. But because okay. of time constraints, of course, I yeah. thought like, yeah. yeah. I'm, I, we have some other questions for Aishwarya, not to worry. And uh, meanwhile, this is on Facebook Live. So guys, if you're watching it on Facebook Live, and if you have any comments or any question for the panelists, please uh, comment there. Uh, we'll take the relevant ones, uh, also depends on the time, but we'll try our best to you know, incorporate your questions and comments. Uh, Divya. Yeah. So like as um, Saranya ma'am told, uh, the, you know, the posters were, were a, like a walkthrough and um, the best part is uh, where we felt really good is the teachers and the principal were like, Madam, don't put it here. Uh, put it a little on top, okay? So that the children doesn't children will uh, reach there. Yeah, will not uh, tear <laughs> it. And uh, they were also very particular to display it in the places where the parents will come and pick up their children. So we oh. also made sure uh, that we displayed the poster in those places, especially the kindergarten and yeah. the you know uh, 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 the small first standard, second standard. In that places, the parents generally go and pick the children. So in uh, we made sure we placed the posters in That's such places. Yeah, yeah. and um, like uh, they were uh, very, as ma'am told, they were very concerned that the posters should not go as a waste, and sure. uh, they gave uh, correct ideas which will be the right place to place the poster. In that yes. way, I will really, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I, we are really thankful to the school authorities. And uh, our unique experience is the experience uh, uh, like where we went uh, for a normal school. We did uh, the awareness program there. And after completing the awareness program, the principal of that school, they just asked us, ma'am, ma we have a deaf and dumb school nearby. So would you mm. mind, uh, you know, uh, uh, sharing your experience uh, with uh, the special children? Right. We were like actually, you know, uh, excited. Okay, though we were really totally unprepared. It was uh, myself and my colleague Shakuntala. We both uh, went in, you know, uh, uh, sharing the, I mean, uh, showing the posters and explaining about that, along with the presentation which OCI has shared. So like, yeah, we went uh, there and uh, the children, um, it was only one class actually. The, uh, the children's were like, it's not a particular uh, six standard, seven standard. It was a group of children between, you know, 12 to 14 uh, years of age. Okay. And um, it, it, since it was a small group, we were able to interact well with them. Okay. And two teachers were there and they were like, ma'am, um, you explain with actions and with the pictures, they will understand in case okay. if they don't understand, we will, you know, do it in sign language and we will show it to them. So that's what they told. And it was really a very nice experience right. uh, where we showed the poster, explained, uh, like, for example, myopia, duro, like that, whatever we could, you know, enact, we did that. And like some conditions like, like diabetic retinopathy, if it is there in your parents, I mean, diabetes is there in your parents, it will, you know, you, you should ask them to go and get right. their eyes checked. Those things, the uh, it, with the sign language, the teachers helped us uh, to communicate. And in order to make sure at least, you know, one or two messages was, uh, you know, taken by them, we asked a few questions and they, again, you know, replied with the sign language and the teacher uh, uh, told us what they meant. So it was a very Lovely. nice experience. Must be very enriching, right? Yeah, yeah. Very challenging also, no, Divya? To, you would have uh, learned so much while doing Absolutely. that. How, to, how yes. do I convey this in sign language? Yes, yes, yes. Very cool. The posters helped a lot because that that was visual and it conveyed uh, the right. information which we want to see. Okay. Thanks, um, Divya. Now from Chennai, we are going to the eastern part of India, the beautiful part where, for what? Part, the land of clouds, is it? Meghalaya? Yeah, Roshna? yeah, yeah. Yeah, One, yeah. so 
see we, we we do somehow we don't know much about you know how things are happening there and that's exactly yeah. why we are so eager to hear from you to how you went about favorite. it how you went about it and how was your experience okay so our state meghalaya is in the northeastern part of the country and here like 90% of the population is tribal uh, majority of whom lives in the rural areas uh, now as a state uh, we have approximately 60% of the population below the age of 25 years so hence we are a demographically very young state you know and because of which i health becomes a very crucial factor for us mm-hmm. and uh, not only this i health awareness uh, which i believe is the first step towards improving the health seeking behavior of uh, right. of people around you know becomes a big pillar of our service delivery uh, program and uh, experience vision project uh, approaching us uh, you know through uh, by optometry council of india uh, gave us this opportunity beautiful opportunity to reach out to the students in the rural most part of uh, right. jaintia hills district in our state and you know we could uh, provide awareness to them and uh, you know through and the awareness that was provided was not only through uh done given through verbal presentations you know which was so holistic uh because it was um, it involved the students as well as the teachers but also through their vibrant colorful like ma'am also mentioned and everybody is mentioning about the posters you see and it was so engaging and uh, the best thing was it was very easy to understand right. you know and usually i have seen that whenever we distribute any information material it is filled up with contents with a lot of content uh but uh, the oci uh, posters uh, it had a very good balance between the pictorial representation as well as a small uh, take away home message and uh, because of which it could uh, you know the students could relate to this uh, to these messages right. and uh, it helped them kept motivated and uh, they were engaged you know this event was not just an event they were fully involved and engaged throughout right. and as a result yes it definitely helped us in improving our service delivery outcome as a as a whole and any particular challenge you you want to single out which was you know <laughs> difficult so uh, because as an institution uh, we specifically selected schools which is present in the rural most part of the part of the state yeah. so as a result the transportation cost to us was uh, was a, was very high okay. you know and uh, when we did the awareness that was a month of like uh, july till uh, june july august yeah and screening was also done in that point of time so it is every and anyway a monsoon season and because you just mentioned land of clouds it's so always monsoon use, season right yeah it's always <laughs> monsoon season and that time it is more extreme uh, rainfall okay. so the roads were pretty bad like you know to reach out to them okay. every time we had to communicate anything the networks were not uh, you know possible right. reaching the principals and the teachers were not possible so we had to physically send our health workers to that place so it, it was quite difficult for us yeah so. i think uh, one point uh, one take away point for all of us who are planning programs is looking at the ground realities and the you know challenges at the ground level like if you're sitting in delhi probably you will not you know look at this as a potential problem but yeah. when you actually on ground doing this it comes up as a problem so i think it's, yes, a, it's a great insight for all of us whenever we are planning any program that execution and planning are two different things and we need to look at other yeah, because issues. our context is very different Absolutely. compared to the mainland yeah and that's exactly why we are so eager to learn from you yeah <laughs> so thanks roshna so that that was more about uh, that was about the phase 1 of the program now we are moving to the phase 2 and uh, as lakshmi said aishwarya was involved in both but um, let me hear from aishwarya because she was um, her institute is outside mumbai right it's in panvel it's it's a smaller different city so how did you go about the phase you can add a little bit of phase 1 also how did you go about these two uh, phase 2 was more about screening of the um, children and also pro- uh, providing them spectacles if they are emetropes am i right yeah so aishwarya uh, so uh, i would just begin with ki yes we started the process of phase 2 i would say with the residuals of phase 1 definitely because uh, the posters still helped us again to approach to the schools okay to number of schools so here i would say experience of going reaching to the school letting our marketing team along with the marketing team we need to have one uh, team member who is 
an either an optometrist or an intern on somebody who actually goes there speaks to the uh, teacher or the principal over there and maybe some parents or whoever is there in the uh, school over there and uh, majorly our approach was why not only the marketing team but somebody a uh, eye care professional also joining them so that uh, the uh, message goes very clear but a uh, major thing what i could notice is the so called hashtag problem of mumbai that is time time nahi hai yahan pe time nahi hai kisi ko kabhi bhi time nahi hai kisi ke paas yahan pe time kisi ke paas nahi hai so that is the main thing that while approaching we actually had uh, got the need to demonstrate what i tell exactly is where even the posters helped us a lot and at the same time uh, even our uh, op- optos or the marketing team was trained in such a manner ki just explain them the need of eye health especially to the kids and uh, time for them was like ki are nahi hamare bacche sab theek hai our kids are absolutely normal no nothing is happening to them it's fine so this it cannot happen or else our program used to be according to the time that is given by them mm-hmm. this will be our assembly this will be our prayer and uh, this will be our lunch break itne se itne is the time slot in that you have to do your program or you have to do the students and thing is they uh, many a times the hurdle came as they are not simply uh, everyone is not bothered to finish the slot ki like okay fine now it's the lunch time it's okay if standard 4 is not completed to let it be let it be fine this bachche ho gaye to it's okay let okay. it let's ignore it so that was an issue, that was a major issue uh, because of the time and with the time we you have one more thing ki whenever we call the students for referrals okay whenever we explain them or whenever we explain to the teacher ki okay fine these are the students whom we are referring to our main hospital where they have to come and get their further investigations done so this thing doesn't get clear to them so it is more of like even if the teacher delivers the message to the parents it is more of the parents ignoring it and talking about uh, they take it as please do whatever is needed over here either you have to give a chashma then give it over here okay listen whatever you want to do it over here only no need of calling we cannot come there okay i even saw the reluctancy of parents and asking me personally that uh, is the hospital going to pay our transportation charge if we have to get a oh. uh get our kids over there for further checkup so for that reason uh, then we just came out with the idea of like how we do a cataract pickup in various places in the same manner we started taking uh, taking up the referrals okay we actually arrange the pickup for the referrals we go into the schools we get those kids we arrange our own buses we get the kids and we do the checkup everything and uh, that's absolutely like after phase 2 we realize ki yes there is a need of follow up well, which on phone or just be going behind the principal or the school teachers is not helping to be arranged until now we are continuing that thing ki after phase 2 also immediately we had to send our follow vehicle we get the school uh, uh, referral kids whatever is the number that is given to them in prior and for that also the school will request us ki no we have a parents teacher meeting come there please explain us why you want to call the students what exactly is the problem why can't mm-hmm. it be called over here so we literally had a marketing team and either one of my team member going and being in the parents meeting and explaining them so over there definitely those posters helped where we could explain them ki see this is what squint is all about this is what uh, your uh, kid is facing all these things so yeah definitely now we have uh, taken it as a practice ki we are arranging pickups for the students uh, all these referral kids where uh, many a times even this was observed ki even the kids were sent as in with us matlab there is no uh, not a single parent accompanying them so because of that we had a issue with uh, dilating the kids right for the investigation they are just like okay, okay fine hospital is taking doing the process free of cost whatever let them tell to the teacher or anything whatever happens they just have that thing in mind ki okay, okay the spectacle would be given so for that reason uh, this again was a major challenge where the counseling needs to matlab is a part where we had to work on like very much deadly why because everybody showed us ki okay, okay they don't have time So five to six rounds of approach was made to the school to organize a program, and that also organizes screening that too according to their time. Their timing, yeah. Yeah, which is given by them. 
बट या डेफिनेटली आई वुड से आई वुड अप्रिशिएट एक्चुअली आई हैड अ वेरी मोटिवेटेड टीम आई वुड से विथ ऑल आर थर्ड इयर स्टूडेंट्स इंटर्न व्यू ऑप्टोज द मार्केटिंग मेंबर एवरी वन दे आर लाइक वेरी मोटिवेटेड इन विच आई एक्चुअली डोंट हैव एवरीबडी स्पीकिंग मराठी I myself don't speak Marathi that well, so it was a major problem for us. But still, my team was like very motivated. The students, the all the students over here are really very motivated to work to do something like this. A community work is something they could enjoy. Right. But I don't know whether uh, everybody enjoys or takes it. Okay. Other than this, also they saw this uh, community work or community I help to be one of their. Uh, subject of interest with which even they want to participate and they could show their enough enthusiasm lovely in explaining the students and uh, doing the screening process and whenever we go back to give the spectacles or take a follow up then also we always have this as a um, request ki uh, aap log aaye hi hain to please go for a check up please do the check up of all the kids again mm. so which is a very tedious thing and explaining all these things in details is little difficult but it happens these are the major major things that happen and we have even the migrants we have approached some tribal schools especially during phase 2 this was the issue ki we had approached some tribal government tribal schools where they have got lots of benefits that is true but in tribal schools we see we have those migrant uh, kids like their parents migrate from one area to area area wise because mm-hmm. of type of work they have so they have those migrant kids coming to the school so the teachers or the um, the principal is just like ki are no ye apna nahi hai so they are just not our kid oh. come here and uh, they are just here for uh, maybe more two three months and again their parents will shift somewhere so they'll go so no need of doing anything for them so oh, oh my god <laughs> that's that's, that's a big issue yeah that's a yeah that's a major issue uh-huh. that we saw even uh, even if we had spectacle we had one kid who was supposed to get spectacle who was a migrant kid he was not given the spectacle uh-huh. because ki are theek hai to here today he'll take after six months if you come for a follow up you will not find that kid again so where he will give where you throw all these things so those people were not taken seriously over there so that was a drawback this is a very unique challenge right we haven't unique, heard of this yeah before. very unique and It's even uh, your the this thing i'm really surprised that uh, the they allowed the kids without parents to be taken yes, yes, yes. yeah that's so many times it happens you with charanya and me have been discussing in other forums as well uh, because for different projects we really need because there's one more project which we are looking at uh, as oci and we really need parents consent and stuff like that you know True. for referrals so it is definitely a challenge when it comes to that this is this is a major challenge that we have faced where we actually that's why we are okay with organizing uh, matlab we are okay with being a part of their parents teacher meeting where we can mm, right. yeah that's a good one that's a good uh, one yeah so where we have somebody who goes and who talks about ki see this is your eye check up that will happen and right. one more thing it is taken as uh, what it is considered especially in the rural I matlab mean, tribal schools of this raigarh side uh, navi mumbai i would not say preferably navi mumbai somewhere interior to navi mumbai as a as a hospital is situated in navi mumbai so uh, there they just have ki it's like god ka bachcha so you just leave okay fine he cannot see so it's okay fine he is god ka bachcha he is like that bhagwan okay. has given him to be like this or the bhagwan it is bhagwan's kid so bhag it is okay so even if he cannot see then it's fine even if the kid even we saw cases of cataract or uh, cases of cataract been given low vision devices oops uh yeah because nobody has ever told them ki this right. is right so yeah so they haven't so probably that, got a proper check up done yes. so because of that no everybody has given them this all yeah. they have never gone bothered to get uh, all these checkups done and they just get lot of right. facilities because of all those low vision certificate and everything for that right. they have just taken it oh okay that's a yeah, yeah for interesting a couple and of and your students would have learned a lot isn't yeah, it yeah it's just yes, coming yes, to definitely. that actually yes definitely my students like our students the team team was like very energetic very enthusiastic and this year we had uh, more of people who are like non maharashtrians but still however they could communicate however it was possible for them they could communicate with the kids they could do the screening even if not talking in perfect right. mar- but still uh, because this is a major challenge even if going mm. to interior schools you don't have the teachers also speaking to you in english or hindi yeah so even the teachers will talk even if we ask or we say something 
in english even i face this problem when we have a follow up call or something somebody is directly talking or i myself visiting the place so i just don't have the teachers yeah. that talking to me why because they don't want to listen in hindi or english true so, so i think quite a few learnings here and i i am particularly happy with uh, you know the passion of your institute and the students because they are also asking stuff about yeah. community and they're getting interested yes, yes. in that so there is this is the silver lining this is what i think this is uh, because they quite... want to continue somewhere they want to do uh, pursue their future in which they could can practice Correct. also as awesome so Good. thanks so much aishwarya meanwhile i'm just again um, we're getting some congratulatory comments on the facebook so thank you everyone who who are commenting those also if you have any questions for the panelist uh, please post them here now let me move across to um, charanya again to to listen to her about her experience with the second phase which was screening and uh, you know distribution of spectacles phase 2 was um, kind of easier or much more uh, mm. you know comfortable than phase 1 because it was more of what we were doing and what we were already trained to do right. and because we had already negotiated the curves of uh, you know getting the permissions and we had already um i i what we had done specifically was we had identified at least one teacher in each school who was really keen on getting okay. the health check up done so we kind of worked in sort of around. correlation with that teacher around them you know we kind of said we're not going to disturb your classes it's going to take less than you know 20 minutes per class give us the time because i I'll, i'll send the kids back as soon as the screening is done um the only thing that uh, we had a problem was when you know they had to come back to the main hospital sometimes for a fundus evaluation and things like that or a cycloplegic refraction so um some of my students have become very good experts at doing uh, borish delayed and cyclodemia procedures because we said they're not going to come learn how to do it here Absolutely. get on with it and try and prescribe very good so you know that i i think that sort of um, brought out how it is going to be in reality in a clinic right. when they're going to be sitting over there because we're not allowed to use atropine right. or cyclopine so they got the real picture and the they teacher the picture, and the right? teacher <laughs> in you ensured exactly. that they learned that's the thing you know I, i i kind of felt really rotten doing that to them saying look this is what is going to be in your clinic learn to do it yeah, and absolutely. and you know kind of standing there hands itching to do it but holding back and saying no do it they have they have to learn to yeah um absolutely. so i think that was um, what our phase 2 was we had a little issues with getting them back into the clinic for some fundus evaluations and things okay. like that um so this is what i was telling lakshmi um i'm i'm surprised with aishwarya's case that the children were allowed to come in without parents because uh, child safety act there are so many other legalities which are involved with that so we were a little um you know cautious about bringing them without the parents um what we did instead was we said sundays we'll open up specifically for you you come in on a sunday we'll work on a sunday because those are the days the parents are not working so we said we'll do that the other option we gave them was if you want to come after 7 we're still happy to see you after 7 we'll okay. stay till 8 9 on certain days and we'll work with you okay. so we kind of gave them other options because i didn't want to work with the right. children without the parents and the other thing is even when we gave glasses to the kids unless the parents and the grandparents were convinced it wasn't working mm. parents would understand and the grandparents would say nobody in our generation nobody in the entire family has ever worn glasses so why are you wearing glasses and because because nobody in your generation used smartphone till now exactly. <laughs> the kids do <laughs> exactly so you know we had to kind of um, so i preferred to have parents right. or at least the grandparents bring in the child so we gave the option to the teachers we said tell them whoever the primary carer of the child is to bring awesome uh, with them so um so, that was the learning we had and i think our students absolutely thoroughly enjoyed this training they do actually um and we had sort of brought in this thing where um i would talk to the principal and get things organized but on you know getting everything packed getting everything moving on that day making sure all the forms were filled getting the ground work was entirely done by the students so i i i i'm taking a couple of you know points here one is the flexibility that you showed because see you want them to come so we need yeah. to understand their uh, problems and we need to cater to them right Absolutely. in a way that it is comfortable for them and convenient for them so Absolutely. if if that means we have to change the timings we have to 
can't yeah. help right and yeah. also the point where students enjoyed and learn i remember when i was teaching we also used to take students away almost for a week yeah. in a remote uh, location where they used to do throughout the day they, they used to do screening they used to learn so much and after the work was done of course we used to have a little bit of fun as well That's but right. those were memories and they learned so much doing these activities that absolutely. even today they talk about it absolutely uh, thanks and thanks. i think there was a certain amount of holiday away from college there. Yeah. they love that <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's away from college right absolutely. like so it's away from the normal work so they it's really learned, love it it's learn with absolutely. fun absolutely yeah um, and sharanya was also one of the people in our panel who did the uh, uh, who coined the um, the protocol, protocol right? so that okay. is uh, yeah so she was one of the panelists for that as well so thanks, that's why i was saying most, that's why i was saying most experience and oh, my, <laughs> and stuff like that <laughs> she's not taking it yes okay thank you so much i take that now <laughs> okay let, 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 let me come back to uh, our favorite region which is the land of clouds east <laughs> yeah so it was kind of strange to hear from miss aishwarya you know that when they were kind of approaching the schools mm -hmm. uh, they responded in a way like they are having time crunch or come next time yeah yeah uh, which is very funny in our context because of the opportunity that comes the, the limited limited opportunity that comes and filters to the northeast you know mm -hmm. at first when we reach out to the schools you know especially in the rural areas uh, you know mentioning about these projects and i feel the project was a complete holistic project and there was a complete compliance for i care not only through awareness but through screening and spectacle distribution so they were very very happy you know they mm -hmm. they welcomed us uh, they offered us uh, they offered our team in fact the food Uh, you know oh. and uh, as i mentioned the transition i think that i'm going i am going there yeah. you know? yeah 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 Lakshmi because Chala. for us this kind of opportunity is like grab on you see because yeah, uh, no very less focus is given on the northeast anyways and the rural part of the northeast india yeah. is like a different story altogether nilesh yeah. retirement plan that's what i'm saying yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, well i'm sure all of uh, you know the panelists present here the members present here we face a lot of uh, challenges which is relevant to our own context you know like um, uh, low awareness affordability accessibility and so on uh, but here in our state uh, to further add up to all these things uh, we face like a lot of additional challenges like uh, very low population density mm -hmm. uh, like national average is 382 here it's only 190 and when we go to oh. it's more interior it's like it's, um, much less. it's it's like very very less you know 60 70 oh. people per square kilometer yeah so to reach out to them and to reach out to those kind of schools it's like extremely challenge for us uh, yeah and the poor health seeking behavior is also there because the intervention has not been much as i mentioned heavy rainfall difficult terrain transportation cost and so on however uh, despite of all these challenges i'm very uh, you know glad to mention that uh, it is only because of uh, intervention of projects like experience vision through in collaboration with oci and bosch and lom uh, that we even get to reach out to these rural students you know give them screening standardized screening uh, like ma'am mentioned standard protocol standard processes tools were also given to our team to go and screen them uh and you know not only not only screen but also provide them with spectacles like a full compliance like what yes. i told them yeah you know like it's a door to door step delivery for yeah. them so it's also providing a solution not just screening yeah 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 not just leaving that's it that's an important aspect ended. yeah and if we just go and do the screening then it's also like incomplete i feel because uh, you know it's just a one time intervention but following up like you know uh, initially in initial intervention with awareness makes it kind of like even in the future they have problems they know our center they know our vision centers they know ab about our hospital that we are approachable you know awesome. and uh, yeah so otherwise it is uh, you know it is very highly unlikely that these uh, students in the rural areas will even get the opportunity or slight chance also to undergo such comprehensive uh, school life screening yeah So awesome so so i think it. look at the you know issues that we have at, in different regions like in yeah. one region there is the providing opportunities and providing care and people yeah. don't have time to take that on the yeah. other hand there are people who are just waiting for you to come to them opportunity yeah waiting for the Chances, opportunity yeah. so i think this is a, this covers a 
the entire spectrum wonderfully well thanks so much roshan yeah. we'll come back Thank to you, you. anyway yeah. uh, now we are coming to the next stage which is also equally exciting and interesting which was so more if about you don't mind can i just ask yes. one ah, question ah, to roshna uh, yeah, yeah, since ahead. she covered like you know rural part i am just curious to know how much was the prevalence of refractive i error. wanted to ask this question uh, at the end but you asked was, her, leave it here yeah when we combine it was uh, 8.8 percent like approximately 9 percent you can say yeah so and I, these areas were like uh, 60 kilometers away from the base hospital from the main city so around eight and a half you said eight and a half nine yeah, yeah okay so what i'm going to do is the others i'm going to towards the end i'll ask each one of you the same question so if you remember it off and wonderful otherwise some other time uh, let let's move across to the phase 3 which was also equally exciting where these young you know torch bearers of of optometry they actually went to um schools and they talked about optometry as a career option and they also had some demonstrations i assume so between mishti and vishal who wants to go first i'll give it to you just to give a background these are the young optometrists who have uh, started who graduated recently and working in the field already and they were very very keen and they, they were very very eager to do something for the profession so that's why they took it up and they went to uh, standard 11 and 12 what was that it was schools and uh, colleges. schools and colleges high so junior, junior colleges and high schools yes. so typically standard 9 10 11 12 kind of students so yes. they went to them and they spoke about uh, optometry as an option so who wants to go first i'll leave it to you uh, good evening sir anyone can go for like oh, uh, you started so go no, ahead all started go ahead okay. i'll give it to you uh first of all, i would like to like thanks uh, our mentors leader motivator and you can say obviously he is an optometrist so nilesh sir is a really thanks to you and lakshmi ma'am without you it was not uh, like i was not going to be a part of this team uh, especially special thank to paula ma'am and all our team members like who were part of this uh, project like uh, extreme vision third and special thank to our uh, kemu sir without him like uh, this thing was not like uh, coming to like uh, this reality. Uh, place. reality reality exactly so uh, like i will share my experience when i like taken up this challenge like uh, something uh, telling about optometry awareness to our indian moms right like uh, if you compare to our population like we have like 135 crores population in india and like uh, optometrists they are very less in number and like majority of the uh, indian moms they don't know about like what is optometry and what is optometrist actually mm. so uh, when lily sir told me about like something there is a uh, exciting things uh, which is going to if you want to take it this challenge as a like uh, complete this project so if you want to be part of this project you can raise your hand and uh, when i taken up this challenge we got a team also and they were across like all part of our region in india like uh, we covered in 60 cities around 30 schools this project when we uh, like uh, uh, there was a, a colleague of mine like uh, his name is rajesh there were so many colleagues like uh, ria was there from siligudi ahmedabad jamin was there from uh, bangalore you can say misty and nikhil was there and delhi the viva ma'am was there like there are so many optums who were involved in this uh, right. in the project so when i taken up this challenge uh, when i used to visit the schools like just uh, we are from, we are optometrists we are professionals and uh, we'd like to like do a session of like uh, approx 3 hour session to your schools of class 9 10th 11 12th student especially for the those student who are a part of science stream and we will just uh, tell you about the optometry as a career like it's a very 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 you can say very passionate job and especially youngster will be enjoying this job as a fun it's a fun you can say as a knowledge as a uh, like there are a lot of options is optimal if you are going to count this you won't able to stop like what are the like uh, options in optometry field right so did so, they allow you immediately sorry sir so did they allow you immediately no no not at all not at all no. so uh, first we met to the security guard they said like uh, you just give me the paper letters and uh, we'll just submit <laughs> to the principal and we never got this call like they will call us or not we got their office number like we will call you back and uh, like uh, we'll just take an appointment for the day to fix to get a meeting with the principal not about the session only about the meeting to the principal right. like we will meet with you then we will discuss about the, our this project sessions 
then at last what happened like literally then we used to mail them we used to call them we were continuously we were taking followers in between even sir you also uh, said us like uh, what what are the other option to make them understand in this project yeah. and then like even my other team members like even they were like it's like challenging but it was we have to overcome it anyways Absolutely. right so finally we got an opportunity to face these uh, things in um, kolkata and we did for five schools then across india 30 schools and this challenge was like people were completely like uh, happy to know about something there is beyond like other field like people yeah. wants to do become they want to be a like right whatever it is so vishal i'm going to come back to you but before yes, that let me just uh, add one thing i remember this was the most difficult part because this was this did not depend only on the students and the optometrists right exactly sir. making posters it was creative they had to do it themselves but here a lot depended on whether the uh, the principal allowed them even an entry to talk to them and then allowed them to have a session with their students etc so this was very challenging i remember at some point we also lost our cool we were like what is happening why is this exactly. not moving exactly what are you guys doing let us know what help you need and so on so we also lost a few hair in this process uh, let me Uh, move across to Misty first. So, Misty, once you cracked this, once you were allowed to go inside, how was your experience? How did you manage to, you know, interact with the children? What was their response and so on? Take us through that. Yes. Um, so, thanks, Vishal, for letting us through how we cracked into the place. And uh, welcome, Misty. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, after we were successful in reaching to the students, so we did schools and colleges both. and we had the majority were college students that was 11th and 12th but our major hurdle was the principal first who would ask us why are you giving us a career session in the beginning of the year the school hasn't even that's always the hurdle right that's always the principals. hurdle <laughs> the principals yes and um, then when we reached out to the students we were like no they should know about the field and something which was very interesting for me was when we would tell them that we were trying to build our network to be more stronger so that we get a better recognition and then there was a oh is it a pmo level and all these uh, modi fans and this say, okay fine please please do a session for our students so that was a very interesting response that we got probably the love to our government that we got the opportunity to to the students students happy to um, hear that uh, yes we were very happy to hear that yes, you got <laughs> so opportunity because of that yes yeah. and uh, uh then when we spoke with the students and we just asked them one simple question how we start like how many of you have heard of this field and you would see batting eyelids and um, after the, there would be like feeble voices around saying that ah is it that optician ma'am and we would be like okay there we are and <laughs> and we would then we started telling them about what the field was and uh, we tried to understand what was this mindset of students as to what field they wanted to choose as we know right. everybody wants engineering medical and why they wanted and uh, some students told us that um, after we ran through the session and we ex- we explained to them the spread of the field and how vast the field in itself was which sadly many of us don't know and they were like um, yes ma'am i think uh, uh, we will keep this as a fall back option so that was a small group which told that which was still disheartening ah. and then we had to sit them out and we used to make them understand that what you are trying to achieve is the same with this field itself you cannot compare a field to another each field has its specializations and sub specializations so you could choose one of them which is equally enriching so it would come down to like ma'am it is fine but uh, will your field pay us as much as the other medical fields would of course, so it yeah. would come down to income at the end of it and uh, we would try we would explain to them how that tree went and how if you went up with your specializations and took up something more promising yes you would you would have that okay. uh, so that was one group and then we had this challenge of we we try to understand the psychology of patients because uh, and students with that that was like a learning for us for every next school or college we wanted to approach um in rurals we saw that concern that it was more of economic concerns and more of uh, responsibilities towards their family towards right. their career and their life so we catered in that direction and surprisingly they were very happy 
because many of them do want to be in a medical front but because of how heavy the uh, the fee structure and all is they are not able to so they they were very happy about the field and um, they were also happy because the government supports us and you have a lot of government placements as well right so that was something uh, we were happy about and um, one thing that was um, very surprising for me as well um, they asked us that uh, ma'am when the field is so nice and it has so much spread across why isn't the paramedical council counseling about this course so that was a question left back to me i said we are working on it but like i said in the beginning that we need a strong network for all that to happen mm. in time so that was something i learned and i said yes that's something yeah. we need to with your help and support probably we'll so that so, so the actual answer to that question is we are keeping it only for the best people yeah. Yes, so, that would be very diplomatic. <laughs> just a quick question for both of you: Did you use any props to demonstrate something? I I heard you use something. Ah, uh, yes, we did use. We yeah. did. We did, sir. We did. What was that? Uh, like we uh, we taken as a sample like ophthalmic lenses uh -huh. and contact lenses trial, and even we had taken our personal like retinoscope. Like we used to show them like uh, what what these machines work and how this function okay. to like do the refractions right. and all. Okay. Like, yeah, that was anything one. else or that? Ah uh, yes, we tried to tell them how tunnel vision was. We asked them to okay. close their eyes, make, and we made them understand how the field was diverse. Okay. And uh, we even showed them couple of videos as uh, how the field is okay. and how people across are. And yeah. yes, that was more promising for us. Because demonstration works the best sometimes, right? Yes, yeah. video always works. Awesome. So we are coming towards the end, but what I'm going to do now is I'll move across to each one of you again. Yeah, Lakshmi, just one second. I'll come to come yeah. to you. Uh, so before I come to you, I'll give a. Lakshmi will say something. Then I'll come to you. I'm going to ask you just very simple question. Everyone, same question. Uh, one was, what was the prevalence rate in in the region in the areas that you did? And secondly, just one or two lines. Your impression about the project, your experience, and maybe in one line, any message you want to give to others. Simple. Okay. Yeah, Lakshmi, go ahead. No, I just uh, you know when she said uh, when people said that optometry was a fallback option, Charanya yeah. and me were smiling. I because for us also this was a fallback yeah. option, and that is how we are. <laughs> but that was so many years I ago. I saw Charanya and me smiling, and I understood this is what is <laughs> going on in our head. <laughs> True, I been there, done that. <laughs> Actually, this this was kind of a conversation we had. Uh, my sister is here with me, and and she said uh, uh, I was telling her, you know, if if. You you have to study and something like that to my nephew and my son and she she turns around and she says so what have you not achieved in life doing optometry you've probably done more in life being an optometrist than what you would have been if you were a doctor you would have been one among so many whereas here you are actually making a change to so many people's lives yeah. so I think that's, that's something exactly I think, what I told Nilesh that sums up so I well Nilesh, the same thing. that sums so up I, so I, well I think I think that is you know um that kind of that that was sort of going on in my mind as mishni was saying that yeah i think most of us feel that right that we we've yeah. done so much uh, within this field being an optometrist Correct. so thank god that we took up this profession absolutely yeah? so i'm i'm just coming back to the same question and this is for everyone uh, uh, if you have done yeah. the screening and things uh, yeah. how, what was the prevalence and so, what is your message to all the optoms yeah so the prevalence was about 13% 13 13 okay yeah um and uh, we did find that uh, acceptance for glasses was not as much it mm -hmm. took a little while but now it's improving as in yeah. uh, you know the more screenings we're doing the more we're talking Right. the more awareness we're creating it's it's starting to get a little better um i would also like to add on as a result of all these screening programs um one of the principals of the school that we screen has referred a student to us to join wow. optometry this year wow so that's so, your victory yeah so we have we have a huge win on that um this program has sort of you know the the passion to do community work i think is there in almost all of us right um, we wouldn't be sitting here in india if we didn't want to come back and stay here in india and do things from where we are so True. um projects like this companies like bosch and lom helping us oci is standing as as a huge support when we say can we do this can we do that and and i'm so sorry paula we're so bad at answering your mails you know we we she's really used to that she's you. used to that so uh, you know 
I I mean, she's so patient. She'll just go, ma'am. Message नहीं आया आपका. That's because you probably haven't seen behind the scenes. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but but thank you so much. Um, I think uh, the whole project brought about a lot of things for us. Yeah. The students learned planning, management, execution. You know, there are so many things like data collection and the importance of getting all the data right. Um, so I think that was a huge learning. Awesome. Uh, I'm speaking in terms of being an educator as well as being someone who's done this work. So I I think you know more projects like this. More learning, and and we'll establish optometry as a far far more uh, stronger profession. Awesome, that's so encouraging, and thank you, Sharanya, for thank being you. so articulate as well. Moving across to Roshna, you you gave that answer of eight point six percent. Now the next part is state, over. Uh, yeah, as a state, the prevalence is approximately eleven percent. In the rural okay. areas, it is a little bit less because right. that much of digital inter. Uh, <laughs> intervention is Possibly, yeah. not there i guess and uh, overall like i mentioned because uh, the focus on the northeast is given very less so we are extremely thankful however uh, i just want to say one thing that in the future maybe if we could scale up in different areas because 10 right. schools for us you know it's, it's a very small, small yeah, yeah. it's it's a big thing for us as a as a as a start but i would like to intervene in more of the rural areas as well So it has we're begun. coming up. We're coming has, up. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> it has begun. It has I'm to waiting, snowball. Ma'am, yeah. It has begun. It has to snowball. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. How about you, Ashwarya? Any quick words? Yeah. As per our data, as in we have got around four to five percent to be our prevalence rate. Okay. But uh, we have a lot of spectacle withdrawals that happens. Even mm-hmm. if we go back for a follow up or anything. yeah, that's another challenge. That, yeah. yeah, we hardly find that kid to wear a spectacle because yeah, moreover because of their parents not taking it seriously or the teachers not actually uh, working on them or come. Uh, we actually use this attendance thing only to the teachers. We explain them that either mark them absent if they are not wearing it, so that they will take it very seriously and they'll keep it as their habit. So this is one thing that has been taken. and yeah once starting with this experience vision program yeah definitely it helped us we ek to i would say i am like i will very much appreciate my team they did a lot of hard work and that was well recognized well appreciated by the people or wherever we reached yes those uh, in uh, schools or those uh, principal and uh, we have some other uh, local uh, clubs or the rotary clubs and all the clubs and few pharma companies also who are willing to take up and take up from their side that okay fine we are ready to do right thousand screening or 500 screening please you can uh, matlab you can involve us matlab we are ready to participate and please do the screening so they actually let their hands to us so we are very happy about it and at the same time just going through this i would say till now even the posters are helping us we have actually added on our this program with a uh, screening of intellectually disabled students All the disabled, we have covered everything: physical, mentally disabled. Right. So, till so, when it comes to the posters, again, it helps them. Okay. So, posters are something very attractive to them, even if they are very. And uh, screening those kids are really difficult. It's a major challenge where we especially take the pediatric opto with us. So that okay. person has to delicately right. work on individual kid, and it takes even if uh, screening thirty kids takes around three four hours or something. It takes. Right. but still we are like very good with it and so because of that we have uh, uh, raised lot of supports and we have raised lot of uh, connections and uh, yeah so the schools are really supporting and after seeing the hard work and dedication that we have put on they actually requested us ki yes please give us a visit every year which awesome. was so in the beginning you know no need of coming so, matlab our kids right. okay. so they have requested us every year they Are okay with we going and screening. So overall, you'll say it is successful and you're happy with yes. it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Ashwarya. Uh, Divya, what do you think? You are your experience was different, and what are your last words? Yeah, it was uh, a well planned uh, program. Uh, for the like the objectives were set, the protocols were well planned, and so that uh, it was we were able to deliver. We we had a clear idea of what was expected, and we were able to deliver the same to the 
community. Right. So um, it was, uh, I mean, thank you OCI for this uh, and uh, Bosch and Lom for this uh, beautiful uh, opportunity where we were able to reach to the community. Actually, um, the, I mean, uh, we were, uh, since there was financial support as well from the, for the travel, uh, right. we were able to actually reach out because we also went to rural places. Like uh, from, we are, we ourselves are located in a, you know, 40 kilometers from the city. So from there, we traveled some 20 True. kilometers or 10 kilometers interior. And there we uh, did these programs. It was uh, 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 actually possible because we had the uh, all the supports which was required True. and True. it was uh, bared by the program so that was very helpful it was very holistically planned thank you wonderful uh, what about misty and vishal the youngsters the young blood <laughs> so yes we saw it to be close to around 11 to 13 percent and um, there was something very interesting that we found that the rural were very interested towards our field but um, again, like I said, I had something interesting. There was one who said that, ma'am, um, is this course available in regional languages? And um, oh. I said, no. But then I came back to read what if it was. And surprisingly, there are a couple of universities across India who are giving paramedical courses in four other languages, including Marathi, Konkani, Urdu, and one more. And, uh, and uh, surprisingly, there's one university who's even translating optometry in Konkani and Urdu and Marathi for that matter. Mm. So I said the, the, the effect and the impact of a medical field is lost if we do it in regional languages, because if you want to see as a global level, but then that's something that they came back asking us because they were ready for the course, but yes, because of the language issues, they had their uh, hesitation. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's come, it sounds like a very genuine um, concern, right? Yes. So that was something interesting, but then overall it was very nice. And uh, I was even asked as to, ma'am, when the scope of it is so well abroad and why are you over here? So I had to tell them back <laughs> that um, if we all rooted ourselves in India, is then when we would see a day we would stop complaining about our field and we would be as proud of our field as people abroad are. So we have to root ourselves for our country and work for our country rather than sitting abroad and complaining that optometry is suffering in India. So we don't want to be awesome. in that land. Exactly. I, I want to second this particular point. Many people keep complaining, Ye nahi ho ra, this is not happening, that is not happening. Whenever anyone comes to me and says this, my immediate question is, yeah, I agree with you. What have you done towards sure. this? Okay. And the answer is, I've only, I've only complained. So... Of course, we have to raise our voice. We have to raise the complaints. Everything is fine. But think about it. What have I done individually? Only then you can, you know, complain about other people not doing anything and holding other people responsible. Vishal, what about you? What is your, uh, your last few comments? Sir, uh, basically, I will just uh, add on something to the misty. Like uh, prevalence rate, we can just uh, say between like 11 to 15%. And uh, uh, second thing, the this uh, project was you can say it was like more challenging, passionate, and like it was happy something new which we can deliver to the uh, community. Like uh, right. we can just deliver like our career as some at a standardization point, right? Like uh, majority of the schools where we are going to do uh, this, uh, where we did actually our like uh, project, we have to do these things again and again because until okay. we're not telling about our like optometry profession they will not able to understand like what right. is actually optometry the overall so there has to be a consistent so, no thank you vishal but I, what he's trying to say is we need to be more consistent it cannot be a one one off kind of intervention and we cannot expect results. exactly sir so thank you so much. I think that was uh, that is it about from my side. So thank you all the wonderful panelists. You've been very articulate, very, to be honest, spot on in your comments and your responses. So I'm going to hand it over to Lakshmi and um, the team OCI to round it up. Yeah, uh, wind, to wind it up. <laughs> yeah. So I hope Kemraj, you heard, no? Vishal said we have to be consistent in uh, you know delivering so i got i hope you got the message <laughs> there's lakshmi doing her work <laughs> exactly that's right no i i'm just i'm so happy you know to see that 
they they talked about all the hurdles but uh, you know they didn't convey anything to me all i got was you know that uh, of course paula would my my tab listen to you are so it. lucky <laughs> <laughs> paula filters it and then sends it to me but you know just imagine at the result just look at the result despite all the uh, hassles that uh, let's say um, aishwarya had about nahi time nahi hai and then the weather in northeast and then you know sharanya's uh, battle towards uh, you know getting permission to do uh, all the screenings yeah. and the awareness and uh, same uh, even Div- with divya you know it was more of her self passion and her yes. team's passion that drove it because the university support i don't think was really much uh, um, is what i understand so despite all of that you know just imagine the results that we're seeing i mean it's it's um, commendable commendable and even the youngsters you know i still thank remember you. in the whatsapp thank i used to say <laughs> i used to say thank yeah, you ma'am nahi hua counseling nahi hua counseling nahi hua and then they used to <laughs> say ma'am ma'am permission nahi mila thank you <laughs> permission nahi mila but you know to top it all i think kemraj you are the i think what shall i say master of the ceremony if i can put it that way uh, because uh, nice without story. that support i don't think we would have you know it uh, done any any of without that support so such a great um, you know for a company to have faith is a big step is a huge huge step and all all uh, uh, credits to bosch and long for that to have faith to have faith in such a young organization to say yes they will deliver that's a huge step you know which you guys have taken and thanks thanks a lot for having that uh, faith in us So over to you, Kim Raj. I want to you know, to listen from you. What's your experience? You know, this is all the good side. So I want you to say what you felt. Which is even a better so side. I'm extremely, <laughs> uh, I'm extremely happy to see the execution part. And in fact, uh, good that I attended to the entire call and I happened to hear the right, you know, uh, things which were happening in market or you know down there in field. uh one thing which is there like uh from corporate side boshlam has been since its its establishment the core vision or uh, the only vision for boshlam is to help see people help people see better and i think this is one such effort which has gone in right direction also for right people i really i, I was like you know my ears were like this when roshna was speaking about the challenges which they had to go to all those rural area or where like you know ashwarya was mentioning that they really had to play like two contrast but then at the end this team of optometrists has finally done it and all kudos to all of you and i'm i know uh, a lot more people who might not be able to be here on this call but then thanks a lot to oci to coordinate so this program so well and uh, a unique thing about this program is all everything was done by an optometrist i think for the profession and for me myself being an optometrist this is a really great thing and i be uh, things which you don't know i should tell you that things which you know the way we started with this i know lakshmi ma'am has you know burned how many liters of midnight oil revising the format revising the protocol and then we discussing over call before every call with corporate and after every call with corporate but then i think the happiest people when we got this uh, sanction from uh, global boss law that yes you can go ahead and do this uh, because uh, the program was was designed so well as divya also mentioned you know uh, that it's it's like end to end it's not only you're going and doing screening and coming back there were like you know uh, interventions made for people who wanted it and also there was a follow up so from a corporate side i think this is what we wanted which all of you you know the entire team has delivered we are really happy uh, about the you know uh, uh, about the entire program execution uh, but uh, i think uh, many of you have said this already and we also know that this is just a drop in ocean more resources should be driven in these direction i was really happy when all of you were explaining that how your students have taken this particular product so passionately and that passion was like really visible while you guys were 
speaking in a way you are already you know exposing your students to communicate i help or you know public i help that is what is required so in nutshell uh, really happy to see the actual execution and let's hope that we we continue doing our giving our services in this direction uh, for the benefit of all these people who actually need us that's all from our side thank you thank you kemraj and uh, you, as kemraj said i think we had a, a huge team uh, many more colleges which implemented many more young optometrists who did the counseling since we can't have everybody we just chose a few just uh, so that they dip, represent different regions as well like aishwarya is from west uh, uh, roshna from northeast and then some from south and of course uh, you know the uh, vishal was uh, doing a bit of north uh, mishti uh, in bangalore and so on so we, we just selected a mixture of uh, regions so that they could be represented um uh, uh, for any facebook uh, questions uh, is there any questions or only comments i i saw a couple of comments they are saying uh, it was a great learning experience through their experience others are also learning which is okay. heartening to see because this is how people learn right yes. with each other's experience aishwarya spoke about uh, the challenges so similar kind of challenge i think uh, one of our uh, viewer also had right so uh, maybe and uh, I, i don't know if we can discuss a little bit uh, more sometime else or uh, some solution can be uh, given in terms of uh, special needs is it yes okay okay thank yeah maybe Any, this is no a, maybe that's a take away and maybe as a team we need to yeah, you know work on that and come back yeah. with possible solutions yeah and no questions for us no okay so one person i really need to thank is madam herself paula so she she you know as sharanya said she she, she is on it you know she say ma'am mail bheja reply nahi aaya maine deadline de diya fir bhi reply nahi aaya <laughs> so all credit to her all absolutely all credit to her for so now uh, remember deadline ke pehle deadline tak agar reply nahi aaya then you are dead Oh, i just want to just uh, say one thing that um, uh, as kemraj also mentioned that this was end to end by optometrist so me personally being an optometry I, optometrist i have never done project work i i have never handled a project so this was a huge learning for me you know that how to how to become a project uh, handler basically so i think i'll do good for the later projects yeah, of course uh, no no doubts <laughs> I, i have I no doubts you are already doing so well I think the panel here itself is is a classic uh, example of example. what optometry can do, what an optometrist yes, yes. can do. There's True. there's educators, there's people in the corporate, there's people who are working in the community. So I I, I think this panel says it all. Yes, absolutely, Sharanya. Yeah. I think that's a very good note to end on. Yeah. You know that uh, the profession has is huge. There there are many opportunities, and uh, we just have to uh, look for it. and be passionate about what you do i think you know that's that's the main thing be passionate about whatever you do i'm so, actually i just you. wanted to say something i'm not an optometrist uh, miss paula just told me to join because i had projects in bansara i care so uh, but we have a team of optometrists yeah definitely who went to the ground level and executed the project yeah thanks roshna thanks for that yes, thank you but i'm sure all your optometrists are also equally pa passionate that's how yeah, the project definitely. was a huge success yeah, for you definitely <laughs> definitely yeah thank you thanks everybody for your time i think we've overshot quite a bit in our enthusiasm yeah. so thank you for all your thank time you. and uh, support and all thanks right. kemraj for joining as well thank you ma'am thank you bye Thanks everyone everybody thank you. listening thank you ma'am bye good night thank bye. you bye, bye. bye. all bye. the best and take care stay safe stay safe everybody